Hey everybody, Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. Today I want to talk to you about three reasons that I hear people say why they're not successful in a lot of this that I don't think are true. And then I'm going to give you four reasons of why I, I do think are actual legitimate challenges why people aren't successful in the lawn business. So the first three are things that I hear a lot but that, you know, can be overcome. The next four are legitimate struggles and why people are not successful in lawn care business. Let's get started with the list. See a little smoke coming out. That's uh, I hadn't started smoking, but that's it's actually cold out here. All right, these are in no particular order. And, and when I start these first three, if, if you've used these as a reason why you're not successful, it doesn't mean they're not uh, barriers that need to be overcome because I really believe they are. But there's a lot of people overcome them and it's not necessarily what holds people back. So number one, it's one you may hear a lot of why somebody says they're not successful, but I don't think it is actually the reason most people are not, is money, a lack of money. Now of course, you know, if you have a lack of money 10 years into your lawn business, then that, that just is proven that you weren't successful, not that you, you know, keeping you from being successful. But I'm talking about initial money to get you started. There are a lot of stories of people who started off with just very basic equipment set up, even if it was a push mower in the back of a truck to get going. And obviously you want to get through that stage as fast as possible and begin to upgrade your equipment. But the money can be overcome. Uh, it it, it, it does, definitely helps to have some money, but in some ways, if you don't have a lot of money to start, it may make you more motivated and more desperate. If somebody um, were to give you a check to go start it, everything off with, it, it might be actually a hindrance to your motivation. Not sure. You know, so just uh, understand that it can be overcome. There's so many stories out there of people that have done so. The second thing is is the right uh, people involved, the right manpower. You know, we often hear in the lawn biz, people say it's just hard to find good help. There's no doubt that that's true and it can be difficult, but I do see uh, all the time where people have really good people working for them. And if you're starting off, then you don't necessarily even have to have anybody. You gotta do it yourself. Uh, but there are good people. There's people out there still willing to work. Now it's hard to find somebody willing to work for $8 an hour. Okay, that's going to be great. So you may have to, to look at your structure of how you've figured out your business and, and think how can you generate more income where you can also pay people a little better and encourage them, give them some incentives and to be able to attract better employees. Um, but no doubt manpower is a challenge. It's a big challenge uh, finding the right people in the lawn care industry, but it's not something that necessarily has to hold you back. And the third one is equipment, and it goes along with number one, with the money you need to get started. You, you, know, you may use that money for other things. You may use it for marketing, things like that. But, uh, but you know, again, you can start off with super basic equipment. You can also go finance a mower. A lot of times you can finance one at super low rate or even 0% interest. Uh, I'm not suggesting you do that or not do that. Sometimes it's a good decision, sometimes it's not. So that, that's something you're gonna have to uh, wrestle with. But there are ways to get um, equipment it, you know to get started even if you don't have much money now in my experience has been this um, if you can either finance a mower and, and get it you know low interest or you try to find one with low hours that's used that you know it's been gently used but on the handheld equipment I typically think it's worth just buying it brand new you know if you're gonna go buy a string trimmer a blower I mean if you found one that was just sure enough gently used then that's one thing but to me it's not worth saving a hundred dollars to get something that's got hundreds of hours on it now on a mower if it's got 50 hours on it it's gonna save you two or three thousand dollars great you know that makes sense but for have a string trimmer that might normally cost three hundred and thirty dollars and you got it for 150 but it was so worn out you know to me that's just not worth it I just go ahead because you're only saving you know, hundred something dollars, it's just not worth it. So I try to buy new handheld equipment, even if you're on a tight budget. Now those are three barriers that a lot of times uh, people use, but those are, can be overcome. The, the real reason that I believe a greater reasons that people fail are the next four, not those first three. So here we go, in no particular order. Again, number one reason I think people fail in the lawn care business is their lack of marketing skills. You know, people don't know how to attract customers. Now this may sound simple, but it can be just as easy as, as setting up a proper voicemail on their phone. Some people don't have voicemail. Some people, their voicemail is just not very professionally done. 
uh, and it makes a difference. You know, your logos, your um, business cards, if you have a website, the way things look and appear, and then a strategy to get out there and get customers, having a good online presence, those things are, are skills. It's something that, that people are good at it, can get a lot of business. The people that don't have any skills in that are gonna really struggle. Um, you know, word of mouth is great, but that all those things take effort and time, and if you don't have marketing skills, you're gonna probably struggle to get the customers to, that you need to grow your business. The second thing is a business plan. Again, you don't have to write this out. It have to be, you know, notarized by an attorney or anything like that, but just to have some sort of strategy of what you're trying to accomplish, even if it's in your mind. Now, I would probably recommend writing it out in at least broad terms, but knowing, you know, who is your ideal customer? What size properties are you going after? Which areas are you gonna uh, try to get customers? Which neighborhoods, which cities? And how you plan to go about doing that? And then what's your plan? What do you want your business to look like next year? What do you want it to look like three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? To know where you're going and have a plan of how to get there. Now, it may not work out. You may have to take a lot of detours, but if you just start off and you don't know where you're going, you're probably gonna get lost. The third reason I think people fail in a lot of business is a desire to succeed. Now, hear me out on this one. You may be saying, Jason, you, that's insulting to me. I've, I've worked so hard trying to get this business going because it's true you know they're, they're, let's think let's give you an example some people they think their their kids gonna play in the NFL and I'll work as hard as it takes to get there and your truth be told they're just not gonna make it you know they just don't have the natural ability well well the desire to succeed what I mean is sometimes you have to just do what it takes to get your business going now i'm not saying do what it takes like unethically or anything like that but you may have to work long hours weekends you may have to get a part-time job to supplement your income uh, you may have to do a lot of hard pavement pounding to get the initial customers whether it's just walking around putting out door hangers or knocking on doors or, or whatever you got to do because like anything it's just it's harder to get something going than it is to you know keep it going necessarily i mean there's challenges once it gets established no doubt but to, to get that initial customer base in that first year so that you make it through the first year and survive is a challenge and you really got to have that desire to succeed and i'm not saying people aren't hard workers I, i've said this before there's not a lot of lazy people in the lawn business but sometimes you, you got to have a, a just a, a crazy desire and fear of failure to make it and and you know i'm not i'm not questioning you for individually don't take this personal but i think sometimes people just don't have enough of that in them and that can cause them not to succeed and the last thing I want to mention, and, and is you may be doing a lot of things right, and you just are in a bad market. You know, maybe there's just, I mean, it's a competitive industry, no doubt, but it may be so competitive that the prices are driven down, and, and people, maybe it's a low income area, and there's just people not willing to pay for lawn care service. So, I mean, if you're in a terrible market, it, it's just not going to work. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you go to, to Walmart and, and you're in the summertime or, or in, in the spring, they start putting the heaters on sale because they know they're not gonna be able to sell them in the summer. You know, it's getting hot and vice versa. I mean, after Christmas, the Christmas decorations get half price and then they go to 75% off, let's just get rid of them. So if you're in a situation where there's just not a market for the services, you can do a lot of things right and still not be successful. And in that way, is just a true entrepreneurial spirit. You're gonna have to adapt and find Find something else to do but for most people in my area hey there's a demand for the services lawn is a great industry being there's a high uh, demand it's a growing industry and there's a lot of great people in the industry it's an industry I'm proud to be a part of so you know I don't think this is for everyone so but it you know it very well could be you may have to be strategic in which city you start and evaluate some of this before you jump into the lawn business I want to say quickly it's coming up on the 2020 lawn care life conference presented by jobber if you haven't been before, we always have a great time. We've got great prizes. Keith Kalfas, Alan Hain, top, uh, Brian Shane from Top Notch coming. We're giving away the Xmark 30 inch mower. Uh, Jobber's the presenting sponsor. A great time. If you're looking to get into weed control, we dedicate the second day to weed control. The first day is more for mowing. You can come for one day, come for two days. You can use discount code 2020 to save 20%. And if you register more than one person, you'll save an additional 15%. If you haven't done so, sign up. Go to lawncarelife.com. I'm going to play the promo video for you now talk to you later let me hear you from the comments see ya bye
Hey, this is Jason Creel. Let me invite you to the 2020 Lawn Care Life Conference presented by Jobber January 23rd and 24th in Springville, Alabama, just north of Birmingham. Come see some of your favorite YouTubers, including Keith Kalfas, Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut, and Brian Shane from Top Notch Lawn Care. Have a chance to win some great prizes, including the grand prize, an Xmark 30-inch commercial push mower, the new X-Series. Hope to see many of you January 23rd and 24th. I'm looking forward to it. I'd say there's no better place that you can go to to, to get the tools you need to be successful. Like-minded people, good networking. I could not believe how many people were here and how awesome the conversations we had. I've learned a lot about growing my business more than anything here. I tell you what, this place could not be any better. We got a lot of great information, a lot of great speakers. The food was awesome. Jason Krill has done a very, very excellent job in uh, presenting this lawn care conference. It's awesome to meet some of the guys that you follow on YouTube. You're around like-minded people who also want to grow and you're listening to people who were just like you who are also growing. Definitely be coming back next year.